The beautiful Silver Bridge, after serving the United States for 39 years, developed a crack in one of its eye bar sections. Was it dangerous? Due to the extra weight the other eye bar had to bear, it also failed. What followed was a series of unusual events, and the entire bridge collapsed into the water in less than 20 seconds, resulting in the deaths of 46 people. How could such a rugged bridge disappear in just 20 seconds? To answer this, we need to carefully observe how rainwater moves within the eye bar joint. Can you tell where it accumulates? Yes, it gets trapped in this narrow gap. This portion of the eye bar is also under enormous tensile stress, mainly due to the heavy traffic and the increase in vehicle weight that the original designers didn't anticipate 40 years ago. High tensile stress combined with a corrosive environment leads to a phenomenon called stress corrosion cracking, a slow failure process that can take 20 to 30 years to fully develop. For many years, the initial crack in the eye bar section remained hidden beneath this end cap. You might have noticed that the silver bridge was a rather unusual suspension bridge. Typically, suspension bridges feature long, flexible cables. But here, instead of cables, the engineers used rigid eye bars. When heavy vehicles passed over it, passengers could feel the bridge flexing. It's fascinating to see how the different elements rotated to accommodate the movement. From this exploded view, it's clear how two pairs of eye bars and a hanger get connected via a pin. The bridge's roadway was made of steel girders and asphalt. It was constructed from annealed mild steel and eventually painted with shiny aluminum paint. In contrast, the famous Golden Gate Bridge uses flexible cables. Even if you cut two or three hangers on the Golden Gate Bridge, nothing significant would happen due to its redundancy. But the Silver Bridge was different. It wasn't designed with redundancy in mind. The decision to use an eye bar design instead of cables was primarily made to save costs. The use of rigid members wasn't the issue here. The designers chose a safety factor of 1.5. We will soon see why this factor of safety is not sufficient. The contemporary eye bar based suspension bridges in the United States used multiple eye bars but the designers of the Silver Bridge aimed for a sleek aesthetic and limited the number of eye bars to just two. The American Bridge Company, the firm behind the design and construction, had developed a new heat-treated carbon steel for the Silver Bridge. This material allowed the members to handle more stress. This unique eye bar suspension bridge became more striking after authorities painted it with shiny aluminum paint. The public affectionately began calling it the Silver Bridge, although its official name was the Point Pleasant Bridge. As the years passed, the traffic across the bridge increased, and most importantly, the vehicle weight increased. In 1927, when the engineers designed this bridge, the average car weight they considered was that of a Model T, around 680 kilograms. However, by 1967, the car weight became 1,800 kilograms, something the engineers could never foresee. Obviously, the mere safety factor of 1.5 will not compensate for such a drastic car weight increase. On days with heavy traffic, passengers would notice significant bridge movement. Still, there was confidence that the bridge was structurally sound. Locals were especially proud of the bridge's slender design, which used stronger steel than its counterparts. Nearby suspension bridges looked bulky in comparison. Now that we understand the material and geometry of this bridge, let's revisit what happened on that tragic day. At 4.58 p.m. on December 15, 1967, stress corrosion caused one of the eye bars to fracture. This shifted the joint pin into an eccentric load position, causing it to twist. As a result, the cap at the other end detached, and the remaining eye bar lost its connection. At this point, a massive force imbalance occurred on the tower, causing it to tilt. The effect of this motion on the eye bar chain was significant. If there had been no hangers, the eye bar sections could have reduced their angles to accommodate the tower's motion. However, angle reduction beyond a certain point wasn't possible because each chain element was connected to the road deck via hanger bars. 
After a limit, the tension in the hangers and chain exceeded safe levels, leading to failure. Let's now investigate what happened to the other half of the tower. On this perfectly balanced tower, let's cut one cable off. Even the other half of the tower is moving forward. Similar to the experiment, the other half of the tower also moved forward. This was enough to break the other I-bar chain as well. Without support from the main chains, the road deck collapsed. The second tower soon met the same fate. This is why the entire bridge disappeared in less than 20 seconds. Eyewitnesses recalled a loud gunshot-like noise and a collapse that looked like a deck of cards. Now comes a major question. While the chain and deck collapse is understandable, what about the steel towers? How could such strong structures embedded in concrete piers detach so easily? Here's the twist. The towers weren't fixed into the concrete directly. Instead, they were connected via rocker bearings. Engineers called the towers of the Silver Bridge the rocker towers. The purpose of these bearings was to adjust for the bridge's temperature changes. If the environmental temperature increases, the members within the tower would expand, and thanks to these bearings, the towers would be able to swing slightly outward. This would avoid the development of internal stresses. Please note that, like most suspension bridges, the road deck of the Silver Bridge was slightly curved upward. When the vehicles pass on the road deck, it becomes slightly straight. Also, the span of the road deck increases. The rocket tower allowed for an increase in span length, and engineers were extremely proud of this unique and innovative design. However, on that tragic day, the rocker towers became a liability. Without support from the chains, the towers couldn't remain upright, and the result was catastrophic. Of the 37 vehicles on the bridge, 31 fell into the freezing Ohio River. Most were reported floating shortly afterward. A total of 46 people died in the disaster. Emergency teams, firefighters, and police rushed to the scene. Boats and helicopters scoured the river for survivors. Local residents and military personnel joined the rescue efforts, but strong currents and freezing temperatures made diving extremely hazardous. Many victims were found trapped in submerged vehicles. The entire steel structure of the bridge had sunk into the riverbed, making wreckage retrieval a major challenge. Sonar equipment was used to locate sunken vehicles and sections of the bridge. Divers had to cut through metal underwater while cranes and barges lifted the massive components to the surface. Recovered bridge parts were sent for forensic analysis. The National Transportation Safety Board later confirmed that the collapse was caused by a fracture in an eye bar of the suspension chain. The High Carpenter Memorial Bridge in West Virginia, built in 1928, was a very similar eye bar chain suspension bridge. It was decommissioned immediately after the collapse of the Silver Bridge. Bar-based suspension bridge designs, especially those using I-bar chains, were largely abandoned or significantly modified after the 1967 Silver Bridge collapse. These designs were considered structurally non-redundant and prone to undetectable failure. Modern bridge design now favors wire cable suspension systems with multiple redundant elements, better load distribution, and easier inspection and maintenance. The Silver Bridge underwent frequent inspections during its 39-year lifespan. The last inspection was done on April 9, 1965. Even though all the suggestions for the improvement of the bridge were not implemented, each inspection did say that the bridge was structurally safe. The technology of the day couldn't see the tragedy that awaited the Silver Bridge. Bridge inspection and maintenance have come a long way since the Silver Bridge era. Today's engineers, along with the visual inspection, rely more on sophisticated techniques like non-destructive testing and embedded sensor monitoring. For instance, the world's tallest railway bridge, the Chenab Bridge, uses over 120 sensors to monitor real-time data on deformation, load distribution, temperature, and vibrations. Such structural health monitoring systems using strain gauges and load cells can also be retrofitted into older bridges. 
The National Bridge Inspection Standards, established in 1971 after the Silver Bridge collapse, mandate routine inspections. Their Level 3 inspections require highly detailed assessments using non-destructive testing methods. With the release of the Silver Bridge video, this month also we have produced two civil engineering videos and we are a very small team. To support my team's educational activities, please check out my Patreon page. Take care. Bye-bye.